Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. In my last upload, I basically showed you all my new animal room, amphibian room, which is really consisting of all salamanders. And I wanted to change it up just a little bit because I know uh, some of you and myself included want to try something else. Um, so I do have some other salamander species that I'm going to definitely get and create bioactive environments for, but I really want to work with an aquatic frog. Um, or a semi-aquatic frog. So I've come up with the idea of using one of my 40 gallon breeders to either house a pickerel frog, that's really what I want to get about three and a half inches at most, maybe four inches, or maybe a leopard frog, southern or northern, probably more like a northern. Problem is, is that a lot of people don't breed these. You can get them as tadpoles from pond stores, but um, I, I, that's my only challenge right now. I gotta kind of figure out where I'm gonna get the frog and make sure that uh, I'm getting it from someone who's responsible. Um, I could catch one. I mean, they're not endangered where I live. I'm allowed to, but I don't like doing that. So I'm really gonna try not to do that. Um, but what I am gonna do is start building the enclosure because I want it to cycle. And it's gonna be like a pond environment with a little land area. It's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be filtered with an external canister filter. Um, and I'm gonna have a lot of bog plants, aquatic, you know, aquatic plants, bog plants, and really just try to keep it very, um, native uh, to to North America. So really excited about this. It's something new um, and uh, really hope you guys enjoy this one and you know let's let's start the process. Plumbing. This is going to be a primarily an aquatic setup and frogs can typically soil the water just like a salamander can but um, what I've heard is that frogs can really dirty the water especially aquatic species of frogs so what I want to do is make sure that my plumbing is adequate to make sure that the water um, quality is good. So <clears throat> I'm just going to walk you through some of the things here really quickly that I'm going to be using um, to filter the tank. So firstly, I'll probably, in terms of a filter, use a big canister filter such as a Fluval 207. I'm not sure yet that's the exact one I'm going to use, but it's probably what I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to do three uh, quarter inch bulkheads. Um, that you know will be drilled through. It, I will be drilling the glass with a one and one half inch um, diamond bit hole saw. As you can see, it fits just over a little bit, and that's how I can usually determine the right size. So I'll be using this to drill the glass. I'll be using one for the uh, intake, and then one for the return. Um, I'm going to be using a low profile strainer, which I like. Um, which, you know, order from the same company on Amazon, you just kind of screw it in, really simple. Um, so that's in terms of the, uh, the intake. And then the return, I'll probably honestly just leave like this. I'm not gonna probably put anything else. I might put a little something in here, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of times this is sufficient. Um, I'm gonna be using these five eighth by three quarter inch uh, barbed, uh, hose connectors um, that they, they'll be on the outside of the tank and what I do is I take some of the um, plumber's tape here which is just this is plumber's tape and I wrap it around this just twice two times and it creates a really tight seal in here in case there's ever any leaks and it helps prevent leaks and I haven't actually ever had any issues with it um, this is duck seal putty um, I don't always use this I've had it um, actually borrowed it from my dad <laughs> Um, and I use it only when I drill the glass so water doesn't get out, but what I've noticed is that water gets out anyway, so I don't always use it. Um, and the other thing I'm not showing you right now is that I use a piece of wood where I already drilled uh, a, a hole for this to be a guide only so I can get a groove in the glass, and once I do, I don't need a guide anymore. And then lastly, I'll probably be using uh, a hose similar to this or a vinyl hose, um, and it goes onto these barb hose connectors in the back. Um, and the, the other side will go into the filter. But this is really for, um, and I also use uh, hose clamps to make sure it's tight. I, don't, I didn't show you those here, but that's really it for the plumbing components. And just wanted to make sure I walk through that because a lot of times I glaze over this stuff um, because it's kind of boring, but it's actually a really important component to this build. So I just wanted to draw your attention to it and tell you the kind of stuff that I use in order to get the effect that I get. 
When you drill, make sure to put some tape underneath and also spray uh, the hole with water as you go and then uh, sand a little bit and clean with rubbing alcohol when you're done. All right, well, I drilled the bulkheads, put them in. This is the one, this is the uh, intake and this is the return. And I also put, I tested the bulkheads and the barbed hose connectors to make sure there was no leaks. There actually was a leak, not with the bulkhead, but with the intakes uh, on, the, on this other side here um, with the barbed hose connector, but I put some plumber's tape on it and it stopped leaking. So that's why you gotta use plumber's tape. But anyways, um, what I've done here is I'm creating um, a little bit of a uh, water circulation. I'm, I'm trying to simulate a pond, so I know water doesn't necessarily move in a pond, but I'm putting animals in a glass box, so I have to have the water moving uh, to keep it um, healthy. So the water will be sucked in here and it will be returned here, creating a loop. That's why I did it like this. And there's going to be rocks and plants and a river bank and all this, or, you know, a, a, a pond bank, whatever you want to call it. But um, this is a really important part of this whole thing. Um, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the egg crate up on the sides and the back uh, and some on the bottom where I'm going to have rocks uh, to create um, a, essentially a framework for the foam or the styrofoam. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet for the background, but... Um, to make sure that uh, there's a solid frame for everything to stick to. So let's start on that now. All right, well, here we are with the A-Crate light diffuser siliconed to the sides and to the back. I have not done the bottom yet, as I mentioned, only because I have to create a bank, a stream bank, river bank, whatever you want to call it, of sorts. And I'm going to have to figure out how much of the bottom I need open to create kind of box-like structures where I can put uh, substrate, aquatic substrate, you know, which is a mixture of several things that I'll talk about later. But um, I'm going to need to figure that out first because they definitely need some land area where they can get out of the water. Um, I don't know how much. I'll probably have a gradual sloping uh, system with some rocks, but I'm going to have to build structures with a crate which I will need to silicone to the bottom. And I don't want to silicone egg crate structures to an egg crate bottom because it's, you know, you really want to egg crate the, um, the egg crate to directly to the glass where I'm going to have that part and then have egg crate around it. And I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean, but, um, so I actually have to go buy some more. I got to go to like Home Depot or something and buy some more egg crate and figure out just how much I need. I'll probably end up having to get at least another sheet. So that's like 15 to 18 bucks. I don't even remember what it is, but, um, but that's it. I'm going to let this stuff dry and then I'm just going to kind of plan the rest of it and how I'm thinking about the hardscape. Really quick. What I did here is I built the land structure out of some egg crate zip ties and weed fabric. Um, as you can see, uh, the weed fabric is to hold in the substrate so it doesn't get out, but it allows water to pass through because this is going to be all aquatic substrate. And I'll, you know, again, talk about that later. But as you can see, I left the bottom open there. Um, no need for egg crate on the bottom. I have egg crate surrounding it. You can see where the zip ties are um, because I'm going to have rocks uh, forming the base around here. Let the foaming commence and we will be using Great Stuff Pond and Stone as usual and maybe foaming in some driftwood and some other things as well. But uh, let's start it. All right, so I foamed using Great Stuff Pond and Stone, and uh, then I um, carved, like usual, with a wire brush drill bit, which took a long time and it was very messy. And I was gonna dry lock it like I did the last several, but I didn't want it to really look like rock, so I went old school. I used cocoa fiber. And I siliconed everything and I smeared it in with a brush and my hands and it's, you know, really messy. But um, it, I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, I like there's some contours in the walls. Um, I foamed in some driftwood. There's a couple rocks I foamed in too under there. Um, there's a couple small spots. I don't know if I need to touch them up or not, like right there. Um, I may actually use some quickcrete and mix it up and see if I can just kind of touch some of those spots up just so it doesn't look black. Pretty happy with this. I'm gonna build up a wall around here with rocks and then I'm gonna um, foam in between the rocks and put driftwood and make it look like a bank. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'm pretty happy with this. It's, it's not a crazy background. I'm not gonna have moss and all kinds of crazy stuff growing on. I don't think I really need to. Um, but pretty happy with this, to be honest. Um, you know, I haven't done this in a while. It's been like 
probably about a year since I, I did one of these um, with cocoa fiber and everything. Maybe a little less than a year, but, um, but yeah, foamed in the driftwood, kind of like it. Um, it looks better further away, I think, than it does um, right up close. But, but anyhow, um, on to the next step. So went ahead and moved the aquarium to the cabinet. I did a preliminary escape with rocks to build up a bank. I liked it, so I went ahead and foamed in the rocks with great stuff pond and stone. Then I started adding some driftwood. I didn't have too many pieces that were really great for this, to be honest. Um, I only had one that kind of looks like it goes over right there, over the rocks, like some roots. So I'm gonna use that one. And then I use this big one over top, uh, just kind of like resting up there like a piece of wood on the side of a bank. Um, it's just too big to, to kind of try to twist it down or you know maneuver it, but really like this. Um, added some smaller rocks. Um, just gotta really wait for this stuff to dry at this point, and then I will be able to go ahead and silicone and add some more cocoa fiber to match it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this one. I think the frogs are gonna love it whenever I can get them. I filled this uh, inside part with a bunch of pea pebbles and other aquarium gravel, then topped it off with a little bit of this Seachem Fluorite Dark. Um, and there's about a couple inches here, and I'm actually, because it's gonna be, wait, this is gonna be well above the water line. So I wanted to make sure that any substrate that was gonna be exposed to the water is aquatic substrate, but then at the top, I'm gonna actually put some normal substrates. Um, terrestrial substrate, substrate, excuse me. So this in here is just um, sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, organic potting soil, and just a handful of bark chips. Um, and I'm just, you know, mixing it up. I'm wetting it down, gonna get it moist, and I'm gonna layer it on the top um, and have that land area ready. And then what I'm gonna do is um, put the aquatic substrate down. Again, it's gonna be mainly sand with um, seachem fluorite dark. And um, I'm gonna probably put some rocks over here or some, another piece of driftwood to kind of block that outtake. Um, and then I'm gonna start planting it. So let's, uh, let's get this stuff in and we will go ahead and start planting. All right, so I put a pretty decent layer of um, Seachem uh, dark, almost like an inch under here. Um, and then I put a, probably about another three quarters of an inch of sand on top. And then I sprinkled some Seachem fluorite dark all around and then I, took some similar smaller rocks um, that I got from some of the same area and tried to match the colors and um, kind of got this effect. I like it. I think it'll look good when it's all planted and everything, but um, I also placed this piece of driftwood here. I don't, to block the, where the water comes out. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna leave that or not, or maybe use some of these rocks. I don't know, but, um, I just want to block it. I want. I also want to put some plants back there, some sweet flag, like some of the grasses um, that grow in the water. So, uh, you know, for background plants. Um, and uh, so I just got to kind of play around with it. I might put some more rocks and build it up a little bit, or I might just leave it the way it is. And just, I don't want to do overdo the rocks. This isn't supposed to be a rock setting. Um, so I may just use this piece of wood and kind of go from there, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna start planting it right now. All right, let's talk plants. I have a ton of ferns. I have a bird's nest fern, um, button fern, spider plants that I'm gonna use. I have golden sweet flag, um, obagon. This is uh, one that I'm actually using in there. It's been going for about almost a year. So uh, I'm gonna use some of that. This actually is also sweet grass, or sweet flag, whatever it's called. <laughs> um, I actually bought this from a pond store. I just rinsed it all off. And then I've got these lilies. Um, and actually there are some pond snails. I'm gonna let them get in there because I want, I don't mind pond snails, honestly, for a cleanup crew. I don't have to get, that means I don't have to go buy narrates. Um, you know, they'll, if it gets too much, I'll take some out. That's, that's it. Uh, I don't look at pond snails as a pest. Um, so I'm gonna use a bunch of stuff in here for the land. Um, I'm gonna use these, I'm gonna use these, and I'll show you what it looks like. So quick update on the plumbing. Um, so this is a Fluval 207, which I use, as you can see, quite a few of, about eight, eight of them, I think. Um, really simple, I'm just using the tube that they have. I cut it, um, and this is the out, so this is the outtake, um, and it just goes onto my barbed hose connector. I use these, um, these clamps 
here, um, hose clamps, and right there, you can see. Pretty easy. So this is filled with water. Um, I actually, I filled this up with water, uh, dechlorinated water, um, rinsed out the stuff. And so um, I'll put this thing down once uh, it starts. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever used these, but you have to use this little pump here to get the water. And so I haven't actually put water in the tank yet, but uh, I just figured I would talk, tell you guys how this is going to be plumbed. All right, so it took a little while, but I planted out everything, including the aquatic and the terrestrial plants. Um, the, as you can see, there's that grass, which is sweet flag grass. Um, I have two different kinds. One is uh, uh, a terrestrial kind that I bought. It still grows in the water, but I got it from a nursery. And then the other one is actually from a pond store. So I think both of them should be fine. Um, plant, you know, got the roots in the substrate a little bit. Um, also put that pond lily in which is cool, it's, you're gonna see all the roots right there for it. Um, that should hopefully start to grow. Um, and yeah, I really like the way it turned out. It's a little cloudy from the sand. Um, I washed it a bunch, but it was definitely um, pretty cloudy. So I had to do a bunch of water changes. That's that grass, I love it. Um, and then here's all the plants I put on the terrestrial side. Um, added some more sticks as well. Um, including uh, the driftwood. I actually added another piece of driftwood. Um, really like this. As you can see, I've got a button a button fern. I have a, um, a bunch of spider plants. That's those green and white ones. The bird's nest fern. Um, I have some oak leaf creeping fig. I've got some green creeping fig. A bunch of moss I got out of my yard, which I really like. I still need to add the springtails. I haven't done that yet. That's the last thing I'm gonna do. Um, and, uh, yeah, really, really liking the way that this one turned out. I like the background. Um, I like the wood, I, I, all the things I added, added some leaf litter to the water. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, and that's again, that, that lily I bought, um, and we here get a better shot so you can see it, uh, really cool. Hopefully it's going to start to grow and cover a little bit of the surface. That would be awesome. And guess what? Um, I don't have a ton of flow on my filter at this level, but the water is moving. So this is a Fluval 207. It's still pushing the water around, as you can see, thank God. So I don't think I'm gonna have any dead zones. It's sucking the water on one side, so it's gonna move it there. But uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. So all I have to really do is add the animals. Well, here we are, and I am actually making the screen. Um, as you can see, um, that these are here screen corners, um, these little plastic things. I've done this before in one of my first DIY builds, um, and then these are the uh, the screen, you know, frame. You just buy it from Home Depot. This stuff is the spline, and you have to use that thing right there, which is a spline roller, um, to roll it into these little cracks. And this is the screen. It's that simple. Um, this is probably one of the easiest parts. It only takes me about 20, 30 minutes to make this. So. This is um, going to take me a little bit of time here, uh, and I will finish up the screen, and I think we'll be close to putting some animals in. All right, so let's talk about stocking this thing. So earlier in the video, I talked about putting in a pickerel frog or a leopard frog. And as it turns out, you can't really find captive bred for either one of those species. Um, there are wild caught ones online at the big reptile kind of dropship companies, and I just, I'm not going to buy a wild caught one and then have it sent here. It's like going to be super stressed out. So I uh, found bullfrog tadpoles online uh, from biological companies. You've got to buy a bunch of them. I don't want to get a bullfrog. They're just, they're really big. I mean, I'm working with a 40 gallon. So uh, I opted to go with a green frog. Northern green frogs live around here. There, there's tons of them. They're everywhere. Uh, really cool animals. Um, so I uh, found some tadpoles at a pond store, but I got to buy a bunch of them. I got to buy like 25. And it's not appropriate and it's not safe for me to buy 25 of them or 20 of them or whatever the minimum was. I can't remember. Keep five and then let the rest go because I don't know where the hell these animals were before that. And I don't want to introduce some kind of weird pathogen into the local um, wetlands here or anywhere else. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in my backyard here. Literally in my backyard, there's a creek in it. And I'm going to catch a couple small green frogs, maybe a tadpole, four at the max, probably like two or three. We'll see. 
uh, maybe if, like I said, a tadpole, a frog, and um, and I'll show you what I end up getting. But I think that's probably the smartest way to do this, um, as opposed to me buying one online and having it shipped here, and it's wild caught anyway, and then it's doubly stressed from being in an airplane for ten hours. I just it doesn't make any sense. So um, just you know, perfectly legal and acceptable here. There's it's a very abundant frog where I live, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and hope for the best. So let's see what I get. All right, well, there's a worm that I threw in there. Um, I threw two, he ate one. So that's the frog, he's pretty tiny. And there's the tadpole. So hopefully the frog doesn't eat the tadpole. Um, I don't think it will. There's a lot of hiding spots in the enclosure. Um, but anyways, um, I'm gonna put him in here and we'll see how it goes. Drop the tadpole in and he is just chilling. That's about it. <laughs> And uh, here's the frog looking all sly, he like, looking like he likes his new enclosure. And really, really love the color on him. I love how their faces are green and just really cool looking animal. So really psyched. Again, might get another one, but let's just see how these guys do. Well, here it is in all its glory really really satisfied with this one not only because i have a different type of amphibian in here but also because i've just always wanted to kind of make frog habitat for a uh, pond frog and i really think that this is pretty pretty good i won't lie I, think I, I did a pretty good job on this i'm sure there's things i could have done better but the cool thing is i'm not even done with this like i said i'm gonna add some more frogs um, i'm also gonna get some more plants as well for the water i'm actually gonna go back to a pond store this weekend and see if i can get another lily and some other things to put in here. Maybe some other floating stuff besides a lily, maybe some water lettuce and things like that. Maybe even some duckweed, I don't know. We'll see, I think that would look really cool, but that stuff tends to overtake everything. So, um, really happy with this. Everything will establish over time too, so it'll become, uh, it'll look a lot better. It looks good now, but it'll look a lot better once things grow in a little bit. Um, so, you know, really appreciate everyone taking the time to Tune into this video. This is new for me with the frog, and um, really look forward to a couple new builds. I have four open slots right now, so um, really appreciate you guys um, supporting the channel. Subscribe, like, comment, and uh, get ready for my next couple of builds. I think they're really going to be fun. Talk to you all soon.